G'day and welcome to another big edition of the RDFNL Netball Show. Thanks to our friends at On Time Delivery Solutions. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Star Weekly. The, the grand finals, they've been done and dusted. It is, and we've had another big year and a few familiar winners and a winner probably that deserved to win the A-grade final. I think Macedon's sort of been the tops, one of the top sides for the last four years. They've played in three grand finals in four years and for this group, that's their second in third year, in three years. And they finally came out on top. Yeah, it's a fantastic achievement from them. Almost as big as the achievement. Then we'll start this as being our first game as well in the uh, the under 19 and unders. Uh, I, I'm thinking it's what 92, 93, 94 wins in a row. That is just some, that's going to be some sort of record. Look, and that's what um, it's possibly a record for Rupert's. But they've won 13 netball flags in five years. That is so extraordinary. So that's not a record. It'd be pretty close to a record in this league, and probably across a lot of competitions as well. But you talk about the 19 girls. Five seasons, there's been an under-19 competition, five Rupert's with flags, and five undefeated seasons. Yep, they, and they, they're just not losing a game is extraordinary. And, and look, a gutsy effort there by Wood and Heskett on the day as well to get within six or seven goals, a, a tremendous achievement. And I know being from a, from a Wood and Heskett background, um, I, I think I, I was hoping Rupert's would, would win because it would be just a significant achievement for them to crack the ton next year. And look, I was speaking to Wood End coach, I think it's Anna Louise, and she said that's the closest they've ever got to Rupert's Wood. That's so, extraordinary. So for them, it was still a win and they gave up. They were still fighting right until the end. I think it was out to about nine goals in that last quarter. They got it back to four or five. So they continued to fight the, the, the into the end. And both of these sides have got a lot of young talent. You look at it for Rupert's Wood, they've had a very different side every single year. They've had some players come back. Like you look at M Katona, she played in that first premiership. She played in this one. So she didn't mm. play in any, I don't think she played in any in between. But that tells you how young some of these players are. They've got 14, 15 year old players. And speaking with Di McCormack, she said the most pleasing thing now is they're getting players coming through from their junior system. So their junior system's only been up a few years as well because obviously there was no netball when they were in the VAFA. And you're getting these players like um, the Bates sisters were a couple and both of them um, were in the grand finals in the premiership side. And there was a couple of others as well. They're all coming through and they're showing that lot of depth and the future of the Rupert's Netball Club. Yeah, it's, and it is amazing, as you highlight. They have, they've had to start from scratch, which is extraordinary. And uh, Wood and Heskett making their first grand final to get within seven goals of a powerhouse team like that and battling very well. That's uh, that's fantastic in itself there. C-grade grand final, well, that uh, that went down to the wire. In fact, it went beyond the wire. It uh, went in extra time. It was Rupert's Wood, again, too strong, this time taking down Diggers Rest. The match of the whole entire day. And that's what, look, I think a lot of people expected this one to probably be the closest one of the netballs. Maybe the B-grade, obviously, the B-grade and the A-grade would both seen close results between the grand finalists during the season. But this is the match of the round, the match of the day. And look, for a lot of it, Rupert's would look like they were about to get ahead, jump ahead, but Diggers Rest kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And they levelled the scores early in that last quarter and they sort of went goal for goal after that point. Probably the little bit of difference, I thought Rupert's would have had a little bit more composure, um, especially in the shooting ring. Diggers Rest missed a few crucial goals late and then once it hit that extra time Rupert's would just dominated that um, extra time they were really really good and you look at it you go Leah Hassan from Diggers Rest mm. was named best on court having already taken out the league best and Ferris. we saw that in the under 19s as well so yep. yeah, yeah with Beck with Beck, and we also saw it in the A grade so yeah. we had so three of them the league best and Ferris then would take out um, the best on court in the grand final and you look at it it's a massive effort from Diggers Rest but that's two years in a row they've fallen short two Rupert's would in the grand final they'd be so close but so far in the end, they'd be probably a little bit disappointed there. And for the Sharks, that's their third premiership in a row in that um, division. That is quite remarkable. We'll turn our attention to B grade, and uh, and probably on paper was the most one, the most lopsided grand final on the day. Uh, Rupert's were too strong to the tune of twenty goals over Macedon. Um, did we expect that result? Not as convincing mm. as it was. These two teams played each other. I think it was in the qualifying final when I watched that day. You look at Mas um, Macedon dominated that match. The Sharks came back at them in the end. And the, and the Cats actually won through to beat um, Rupert's Wood for the first time in B grade ever. So the Cats entered the grand final. They were the first team through. Rupert's Wood had to come through the hard way. But then the Sharks, they're a very experienced lineup. We mentioned about their 19s and the record they've got. Their B grade side's not far behind them. I think Dye um, said they'd lost about three games in five years. So that's their. Mm. 
mm. fifth flag as well. <laughs> I think the margin was the big difference, and even Di said that she didn't expect to win by 20 goals. And we had a worthy uh, best on court winner as well, too, one of the standouts in the competition. In Georgia Howie, yeah. And I was look, I was having a quick look because in my head I'm like, I don't think this is the first time that she's won a le- yeah. won a best on court on a grand final day. And I've, I, I counted, I think there's at least two before that. I think he'd under 19. So that's at least the third best on court medal she's got over that time as well. So quite a worthy best on court winner there. Absolutely. Wonderful effort. And, uh, and of course, to A grade, uh, Macedon too strong over Romsey. Um, in, in a game that was, well, realistically, the, the, the steps have been put in place for Macedon to have a win to, to, ma- to make up for last year. Look, it is, and it's been 12 months in the making, mm. ever since they went out in straight sets in that it was Melton Central, they got rolled by, I think, first semi-final last year. So, yeah, what happened was they ended up, um, yeah, they lost the semi-final, having lost the qualifying final to Romsey, and with, I think, the best quarter of netball I've ever seen, I think Romsey um, turned a deficit in with a 20-goal last quarter. So it was just a remarkable last quarter, that yeah. one. But, yeah, so in the end... This one, you look. Their first semi-final um, this year between the two sides was in the rain. R- Romsey took it up to Mass, and we had a little bit of rain, but nothing like um, last time. It managed to hold off for most of the match, and in the end, it was just that one quarter. It was the second quarter where the Cats managed to get the margin out. They didn't do anything brilliant, but they just managed to get the margin out. They got it around to that six to eight goal, and it stayed around that for most of the match. It blew out late um, when it got out to about the, got out to the twelve goals, which ended up being the final margin, fifty-six to forty-four. But it was really only that second quarter. Other than that, the Redbacks stuck with them all day, but they just couldn't um, close the gap. Chloe Wilson has virtually won everything on offer to her. She took out the MVP award in the VNL Division One competition. She backed it up with the Ryan medal. She's won a premiership medal. She's also got a best on court medal. All she needs to, to get the clean sweep is to take out the, uh, the club best and fairest in a premiership year. We reckon... Her form said, suggests that she'll probably take it. She'll definitely be up there for certain. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see who could take it off there, let's well, we be have, honest. Well, you have seen and I have seen um, people win AFL Brownlows and not take out yep. the club best and fairest. I think Gary Ablett didn't necessarily win them each year. Correct. So you've got something like that. But look, she's had a brilliant year. And I think the biggest thing for Chloe is getting off to a good start. She's been a slow starter, I think, all throughout the year. And she actually got off to a good start in the grand final. And that settled her nerves because obviously some people um, with grand finals, you can get that nerves and can affect the way you play. But she got off to that brilliant start and what she was after and that sort of set the tone for the rest of the side. I think her season's been very pleasing considering they had a bit of an indifferent start with Amy Carroll originally recruited to the club and then uh, and then she uh, she parted ways and that sort of opened up a, a bigger responsibility for Chloe to take in the, inside the the, uh, the shooting rink. Well, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Chloe was their main shooter anyway. She's been yeah. their main shooter since she came across. Last couple of years she's uh, I've either worked with Kira, she's worked a fair bit in the past with Tara Burnup as well. So she has been that main shooter it's whether or not sort of because Kira can come out into that wing attack if you put Amy Carroll and Chloe Wilson in goals it was still would have been a good combination but in the end it's gone back to one that mm. been going long before they've they hit the RDFNL in um, Kira and Chloe like Chloe I think ha- did change her position a little bit she is generally a lot of time a goal attack correct she has had to move back to the goal shooter but she's done a brilliant job there yeah it's, and it's quite fascinating and I guess that makes the achievement even greater for Macedon is that the when when you when it comes to two gun shooters, you invest so much into it, especially when you bring a, a reigning Ryan medalist across as well. So, um, you know, they they went back to what worked, and uh, and, and hats off to Romji as well. They um, they had a lot of change of personnel from the grand final side last year, a change of coach as well, and full credit to them, they're able to make a grand final from uh, from fourth position. It is, and look, and there's a lot of bright signs for Romsey. Not many people expected them probably to get back to where they were. They were just about in every single match. They were really competitive. They, as we've previously mentioned, yeah. they had a lot of close losses, a lot of close wins. They could have got through to the grand final if not for a, a game that went to extra time in the second semi against Macedon. Ex- exactly. That's how, they've been that. And look, it wasn't... It hasn't been the easiest season. They lose Bronwyn Blair with an Achilles injury. And then I think they were hoping to get Hope Hope Evans back in, but Hope um, sort of stuck with the B grade and that sort of stuff. So they had to find a new shooting combination at the end of the season. Even coming into the grand final, Kaylee Armstrong was struggling with a foot injury and then she rolled an ankle as well. So uh. you look at that, um, but they've had, it hasn't been easy for them, but they managed to make a grand final. And we, we spoke about last week, their brilliant record they've had over that period of time. And they've managed to bring a few players up. So they've got a few players who haven't had a lot of A-grade experience getting that opportunity this year, some in different positions as well. So there's encouraging signs there for the future with most of that side, if they can stay together, they're aged between that 20 to 25 age group bracket. So they've got plenty of um, time to 
they can actually build. And if they add a couple more players, we'll definitely contest next season. Says uh, that we've got a bumper of a season next year. We can just imagine Diggers Rest are going to improve. Melton Central's uh, are likely to improve as well. Wood and Hesket have already shown uh, great signs of improvement. What we know, Wallen are up and about. Rock Bank, are, well, they're only going to get better. Uh, probably, you know, we'll, we'll say we'll see with optimism with, uh, with how Broadford goes. But I just think the steps have been put in place now that if these teams can, every team can get better, next year is going to be really, really tough. Look, I think we saw probably the best season we have for a long time. Obviously, the last few years, we've sort of had the six, seven teams in it to the end, um, looking to that final spot in finals has been decided late in there. But there's a lot of young talent. Obviously, um, you mentioned that Wood and Heskett, we look at what, they, they've got a few more wins in that A grade than they've had previously. And a lot of those girls are in that under 19 premiership so, in grand final side as well. Mm. So there's a lot of depth across the competition and it's an exciting time. And we're starting to see different teams up there, different teams winning it. And you're probably gonna get your same old teams up there as well, which makes a really interesting season next year. Absolutely. And that is next year where we will turn our attention to. But as uh, we, we wrap things up for an exciting uh, great finale to the 2018 season thanks to our friends at on time delivery solutions tara thanks so much for uh for, for coming along for the ride throughout the uh, the 2018 season and and no doubt we'll uh, we'll definitely get you on board throughout the preseason to talk up any exciting developments that do happen to, to make sure all the punters out there are well in tune and of course they can read all the other great stories and uh where, where can they find them they can find them on our website so we've got um wrap up we've spoke to every single winning coach so we've got stories in both netball and football. So you can go to www.starweekly.com.au. Make sure you check that out, Tara. Thanks so much for coming along. And thanks to everyone for uh, for jumping on board throughout season 2018. And we cannot wait for the build-up and anticipation for 2019.